Hi, I'm Shem. Welcome to our church. What's up, my people? Welcome to an awesome church. Hi, my name is Kevin, and if you're looking for a church, glad to have you. Welcome to Abuna Young and Fellas. Enjoy. I'm Kaida DJ, and we are glad to have you. Hi, my name is Arthur. Thank you for watching this broadcast. Welcome to Mavonia and Fearless. Keep it locked. What's up everybody, it's your boy, your pastor, your rapper, Kingdom Child. Welcome to Mavuno Young and Fearless. In case you're watching this for the first time and you would like to see more of our videos, make sure you check out our YouTube channel at Mavuno Young and Fearless. Enjoy the service and stay blessed. Yo, 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 how you guys doing? Happy New Year, first of all. I really want to appreciate each and every one of you. Like, the, the reason I'm appreciating each and every one of you for staying on, for listening in. I know it's been a year whereby, you know, church hasn't been in-house. It's been online, right? But I really love that you guys actually been there and consistent to actually listen to us. So I have missed you guys. I don't know whether you've missed me, but I've missed you. Like, you know, you seeing me and me seeing you. I don't know. You, you get that one I mean I don't know yeah but this is the point where I actually still like five no one minute one minute to just say hi to my uncles aunties and then you know the final thing is when you, mama I made it I'm a winner I'm on TV now huh but yes happy new year again good to see you guys I really really love you guys so here's the question that I have have you ever thought that you could actually be a hindrance 
or a block in someone's life? Do you feel like you could be a barricade in someone's life? That's a question I ask myself every day. So I want us to read something so that we can actually be able to delve in and understand what I mean. Um, so let's read. I want us to actually read from Matthew 8, 5 to 13. All right. Um, you might not see me read the whole thing, but I guess it's right there on the screen and you, ha- you have your Bibles. Read with me, right? So, you know, from 5, it says, When Jesus returned from um, Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, my servant lies in bed, paralyzed and terribly in pain. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under authority of my supervisor's office. I have the authority over my soldiers. Only need to say go and they go. Come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus turned, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed turning to those who were following him and he said, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. You know, the end of the story is where actually now 13, he says, Jesus said to the Roman officer, go back home because you believed it has happened. And the young man was healed that same hour. Guys, understand this. Jesus was amazed. Like he was astonished, astounded, surprised, shocked. You know, like he was, he was like, wow, I haven't seen such faith in all of Israel. So coming back to my question is this, is do you believe you could be a blockage or a hindrance to someone else? Ask yourself that question. So please write down in the comment section, tell us what you think. Tell us if you, if you have been, or maybe you think you could actually be. But yes, as we do that, I'd like to welcome you to week four of this amazing series where we're all winners. And today we'll be actually talking about love. Do not underestimate your faith because your faith can do a lot around people. So understand this. When this Roman soldier came to Jesus to ask for healing over his servant, he knew that, he knew who Jesus was because he, he, he didn't just say that, no, I don't have, you know, the honor for you to come and be my house, but I know you can speak. He knew the amount of power that he had. Now imagine this. At that point in time, when people ran to Jesus to ask for healing, is because they knew that he's the, you know, the Messiah, the Savior. You know, when he died on the cross and now he dwells in you, and that's why the, you know, the word says that, you know, greater is he who lives in you than who lives in the world. It's because when you speak as well, your power that you have within your tongue through Christ who strengthens you, you can actually be able to be a blessing to someone else. You can actually be the person who creates a path for someone else. Now understand this. When you read about the story of the lady who had the bleeding problem, that's, you can actually find that story in Mark 5, 25 to 34. This lady like literally she suffered at the hands of many doctors but you see at that last moment when all else was hopeless and she saw Jesus she was like I need to be able to just touch the hem of his garment now imagine you know you know you can imagine the crowd of people that are around him and everyone is trying to understand and listen to him and also that they can actually get the wisdom or even get healing or ask for what they needed in their lives But this lady crawled between them just so that she could touch the hem of his garment. Now, I don't know, but when I read the Bible, I actually try to imagine this. Try to imagine now she is crawling through these crowds. Bet you some people are actually pushing us left to right. Maybe people, some people trampled upon her. Or maybe she didn't even have to like grip all of it. Maybe she just had to even tap with the tip of her finger and that was her healing. But imagine all these other guys. Imagine, maybe she would have been like um, the blind Bartimaeus and just shout, Lord, have mercy on me. And maybe she would have been heard. But imagine maybe the crowd was so heavy that that literally her voice could not have been heard among the masses. 
So she decided to crawl all the way to the back of him and just touch his garment for that healing. But just imagine this. What if the people saw her crawling and they decided to create a path for her to get to Jesus? What if the people actually said, let's help you get to where Jesus is so that you can actually receive the healing? But everyone was so crushed up and probably she was like trying to stretch just so that she could touch the hem. Now here's the thing. When I asked you the question, can you be the blockage to someone else? When someone comes and asks you, hey, I want you to pray with me. Do you say, hey, Leah, let's pray. Or do you feel like this person is telling me so many problems and you're like, no, <laughs> you deal with it on your own. Someone says, can you help me with something? And you feel like, I have problems on my own. You can actually take care of it or ask someone else. But what if you just took a minute to even pray for that person? What if you just took a minute just even to help that person? Instead of you becoming the barrier for them to reach where they're going, but you actually were the pathway for them to reach where they're going. Now, I want you to understand this. Not all of us will be able to attain a miracle, but you can be a miracle to someone else. Because I used to be the same. I used to be like, I want a miracle for myself. I want to be able to, 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 to receive all these miracles, to see the blessings of God happen in my life, for me to get financial freedom or for me to get these things that I needed. But imagine, it took me to step back and see what God wanted me to do. Being a blessing to someone else where you get to see miracles happen in their life is the greatest satisfaction that someone can have than always thinking that you need to be first. Being a winner doesn't mean that you have to always be at the forefront, but you can still be at the back cheering on the rest who are ahead of you because we are all winners in Jesus Christ. So I want you to keep this statement. You may not always receive a miracle, but you can be the miracle in someone's life. So I challenge you this week. Become a miracle to someone else. Pray for someone. Help someone. Be that path to someone's success. Have a good one. Falling in love yeah, with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Was the best thing I ever, ever done Seeing his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, I'm never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. And there's no place I'd rather, rather be. Yeah. Oh. Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Was the best thing I ever, ever done
Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Was the best thing I ever, I've ever done In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, I'm never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. And there's no place I'd rather, I'd rather be. Oh, there's no place I'd rather, rather be. Yeah. No place I'd rather be. Yeah. Falling in love. Falling in love. Was the best thing I ever, ever done. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful love, you are my king. You are the one, my every. And now we run to you Cause you are all I need Beautiful love You are my king You are the one My everything And now I
protected And there's no place I'd rather be Oh, there's no place I'd rather Oh, there's no place I'd rather Rather be So yes, guys, the word again I said, you may not always receive a miracle, but you can be a miracle to someone else. Just understand that. Let it sink in. Let it, I don't know, let it be a part of you. Just to understand that you might not always get what you want, but imagine you could be the solution to someone else's problem. You could be that road path. You could be that direction that someone needed. Or you could be <laughs> the prayer partner to that friend, to that loved one, parent, brother, sister, teacher, just so that they can actually be able to achieve what they've desired. You know, as Christ lives in you, he wants to work through each and every one of us. So let's fall in love with him. Because it's always the best thing. And the best thing is to know that when Christ was here, he was here to make you set yourself on the right path. He was here to direct each and every one of you, me and you included, on the right path. So let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you. We adore you for your great love, mercy, for your great miracles that you do for us in our lives, Lord God Father. We thank you for who you are, for who you've been, Lord God Father. We ask that you may come and dwell among us, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, may you teach us not to be able to be blocks or hindrances to someone else. But may we always be the path for them. May we always be the answers to some of their needs. Heavenly Father, we know that through you we can be able to achieve all that we desire. So Heavenly Father, I ask and I pray that you may work through us. That even from the words that we speak, from the prayers that we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will answer our prayers. For truly whatever we agree upon on earth, it is agreed upon in heaven. So we thank you. We honor you. We cherish you for your love. And we ask that you may continue guiding us and continue working through us from this day forward as we seek you more, as we seek your kingdom. For I pray all this, trusting and believing in your mighty name. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a lovely and a blessed day. Bye bye now. In his arms, I feel, I feel protected. And there's no place I'd rather be. Oh, there's no place I'd rather. Oh, there's no place I'd rather, rather be.
Thank you so much for watching the service. We hope you have been blessed and learned something important. If you want to connect with us more or check us out, we have other interesting videos and someone's on our YouTube channel, Mavuno Young and Fearless. We'd love to see you subscribe, like, share, and comment. Kindly enjoy your week.